Hi, everybody. Anthony Fantano here, Internet's busiest music nerd. You know who it is, and it's time for our weekly track roundup. Whoa! Where I go over what I felt were the best and the worst tracks of the week. You know what it is by now. Uh, before I get too deep into that, I have to shout out our sponsor in this video, the good people over at SeatGeek. If you're not familiar with SeatGeek by now, they are an app that aggregates tickets to live events from all over the web to make ticket buying simple. They put a 0 to 100 score on each ticket to let you know if you're getting a good deal or a bad one. Green is good, red is bad, and their in-app view from Seat lets you see where you are going to sit. Enter code DROP to get $20 off your first order. Click the link in the description down below to download the app and get more information. All right. And... Of course, as always, we have our Amazon and Turntable Lab associate links down there in the description box. If you hit up Turntable Lab where they have fantastic, colorful pressings of records that I review on the channel, as well as audio equipment for your budding record collector, we get kickbacks from that stuff. So, uh, you know, just, uh, just treat yourself and treat the needle drop at the same time. And uh, let's get into a few shout outs before I get too deep into, you know, all the tracks that I thought were the worst and best and so on and so forth. Uh, Waves has a new reissue of the Waves album coming out. And there is uh, like an additional like bonus track or at least, you know, more bonus material coming with this re-release, which is, it looks like a wonderful black and white splatter. Uh, the track is All Star Goth and it's it's an OK cut. It's not a bad cut. Um, and it it kind of sounds super fuzzed out and lo-fi and a little bit dreamier than I guess a lot of the other material on the album. Also a Tyler the Creator demo from like 2016 is floating around the internet now for some strange reason. Uh, it's not bad, uh, but I can kind of see why it, it, it's a demo and why Tyler would have a hard time kind of working out some of the rougher, weirder parts of the track into something that uh, might have been up to snuff on something like Flower Boy. Uh, next, Prince has released a, or well not Prince, because obviously anything that is released at this point is posthumous, but new music, or I guess a, an unheard piece of music from Prince has surfaced on the internet now, where it's essentially uh, his version, which, I mean, he wrote the song originally, but uh, it's, it's a recording of him performing the track Nothing Compares to You, uh, which of course uh, he wrote and, and handed off to a Sinead O'Connor. So uh, it's, it's actually one of my favorite songs he's ever written. Uh, so it's kind of crazy to finally hear him uh, performing it in a, in a studio uh, setting. And um, yeah, it's, it's a wonderful track. It's a wonderful performance. I love it. And uh, I want to shout out this new portrayal of Guilt Split with Street Sects. Uh, it's, it's, it's out now on Bandcamp as well as this new uh, EP from Ibibio Sound Machine. So there's a lot of, there's a lot of stuff to shout out. Uh, a lot of material like dropped this week. This is a really, really busy week. Like th there were some tracks that I just had to cut out of the segment entirely because there was just so much to talk about. Uh, but yeah, this has been like a huge music week, like just so much, just like a flood of new EPs and songs and, and really everything. And, and I guess uh, 2018 is heating up. I mean, it's, it's starting to uh, be spring. It's getting warmer. Well, it's festival season now, so of course, like uh, some of those big albums, those big records, uh, those releases that labels and artists think are, think are going to do huge this year are going to be dropping now and, and very soon. So uh, let's get into what I felt were the worst tracks this week. Uh, first, ugh, this new Ray Shremmerd track with Travis Scott. Again, just feels like another kind of mediocre uh, rodeo leftover. Uh, the, the track is titled Close. And uh, God, it, it, instead of saying, you know, the, this person that they're talking about is close to me, they just keep spelling out the word close. <laughs> and it's not very catchy. It's just like ridiculously dumb. And I, I just don't, uh, I, I don't get it. Are, are people not helping them write the songs at this point? Or did they just decide to go out on a limb and do it at all and, and do all of it themselves? And uh and, and now it just kind of ends up sounding like a mess. Potentially so, I guess. Uh, moving on from there, Leon Bridges, good thing. Uh, the, the, he's, he's got a new record coming out very soon, and this track that he's released recently is the song Beyond. And uh, m maybe for some people, this, this is uh, one of his better tracks. I mean, it's certainly a love song that maybe if you throw it on a mixtape or something, it, you know, it might win over your significant other. 
but uh, th these are easily some of his most overly sentimental lyrics, like ever, and, and not in like a, a, a good way. Um, to the point where it's like a little tough to listen to, but I guess it is a kind of sweet, endearing tune to an extent, but I could not get into it. Uh, moving on from there, Father John Misty, Disappointing Diamonds Are the Rarest of Them All, which I, I guess it's kind of ironic that this track is landing in the worst section. <laughs> Because I do not care for this song at all. Uh, you know, if, if, if you didn't know, uh, Josh Tillman has a new record coming out very soon. It's much more trim and straightforward than uh, pure comedy. From all the songs we've heard so far, it doesn't seem like anything too weighty or uh, too, uh, uh, I guess, serious being thrust upon the audience. Not that Josh isn't a serious songwriter at this point. He most definitely is. But I guess a lot of people didn't really like the social commentary and the political direction of his last record, Pure Comedy. Uh, but this new song over here just felt like a total mess to me. Uh, it's it, The way that it starts, it almost seems like we're starting at the bridge of the song. It, it almost just seems, the whole song just seems like an overextended bridge itself. And the uh, I guess overly illustrious instrumentation, which isn't mixed very well, doesn't pair uh, at all with Josh's falsetto vocals that he uh, kind of riffs on throughout the entirety of the track. It's, uh, I don't know, just, just a little tough to listen to for me. Uh, total, total mess. And uh, maybe it might make a little bit more sense within the context of the record because maybe it's like more of a transitional track or something like that. I can appreciate the sad and, and brokenhearted sentiment of, of the song, but uh, beyond that, just like the sound of it just uh, was like nails on a chalkboard for me. Mm -hmm. uh, moving on from there, Cal Chuchesta has a new track out. It's titled Don't Talk To Me. It features Felicia Gavesha, and it's, uh, it's total shit. It's total garbage. Production sucks. Uh, lyrics are stupid. Cal's flow is dumb, and um, it's not good. It's it's not it's 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 really bad. The mixing of of the song is trash. Like the, there are these flutes that are too loud. The bass is just who the hell mixed this thing? It's it's trash. All right, and uh, an ASAP Rocky just put out a new track uh, titled "Heroina Blunts," and it just sounds like a bad demo from two thousand nine. I I just don't get it. How has ASAP Rocky backslid this much? Like what? How how has it come to the point where, <laughs> where his music just sounds like no, nobody on his team is trying anymore? I I just I, I don't get it. Why is nobody stepping in and just being like, hey, dude, look, this is this is not it. This is not it. Live, love, long live. We're great, great. Someone someone's eye was on the ball. And now it just seems like the whatever was there is completely gone, and and I don't know where it went, um, but whatever. And uh, that's it for the worst tracks. Let's get into the tracks I was kind of met on. Not terrible, not terrible at all, but I just wanted to kind of give them a little bit of a, uh, a shout out, a mention, because you know they they, they they just a little shout out and a mention because you guys might dig them a little bit more than me. A new Touche Amore track, Green, kind of seems like your standard. Screamo parsed post hardcore fusion affair for the band, but it's it's not a bad track. It's all right. Uh, new track from the Voids, "Cool as a Ghoul," super lo-fi, very rough and gritty demo-ish cut, kind of weird, kind of off the wall, uh, but definitely not one of the better tunes that they've come out with recently. You know, I mean, it wouldn't really go toe to toe for me with anything off their new album, but um, you know, it's a uh, it's it's a pretty fun cut. Uh, new Janelle Monet, surprisingly, I like that. You know, I've been super hype on every single single from this album so far, and this is the first track to really underwhelm me. Uh, not because I think the tune is all that bad. Janelle's mo vocals are definitely on point with this cut, um, and I think the lyrical sentiment is is pretty sweet as well. But the beat is just like this super generic, uh, very light diet trap, and uh, I don't know. It's it's just super run of the mill. I, I just don't. Uh, get with all the vibrant instrumentation she's hopped on so far with uh, all the promotional tracks, wh why she would even touch an instrumental this plain and this average. Mm -hmm. uh, moving on from there, I did kind of dig this other Father John Misty track, uh, Just Dumb Enough to Try. It's it's a decent it's a decent cut. Uh, it's a little overly long and, and super, super dreary, nowhere near as catchy as uh, Mr. Tillman, uh, which he dropped first to kind of promote this new album. Excellent song. Um, 
but you know it might be a track that uh, that grows on me a little bit as uh, as I hear the entire record. Uh, but again, not not a terrible track by any means. Uh, and a new Ariana Grande uh, over here, "No Tears Left to Cry," uh, sort of a fusion of dance pop and um, like R and B on on this one. It's not bad. It's got a good vibe, and Ariana's vocals are always on point. She's a very good singer, uh, but the tune is just kind of lackluster in my opinion. Like there, there's not a strong tune. Uh, to the song, and I feel like that's kind of what is preventing it from uh, being as 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 good as it could potentially be. Uh, let's move on to the tracks I thought were the best tracks this week. Ooh, ooh, and I actually have quite a few tracks in this section. Uh, Machine Drum, Hype Up. This is one of the best tracks Machine Drum has come out with in a while. It's super, I don't know what you would call it, jaunty. It's very... Uh, hype. It's very upbeat. It's very bright and futuristic. Kind of brings things back to uh, like that somewhat wonky kind of purple soundish style that was hot earlier in the decade. Um, total banger. Very fun. Very glitzy. Uh, again, super futuristic. Kaleidoscopic uh, in a way too. Just kind of love the production. Love the bubbly and, and bright and glossy synths all over this track. Uh, next, Lotic Hunted. Um, I, I know this artist has a new record coming out via Triangle Records, and beyond that, I cannot make heads or tails with this track outside of the fact that I, I know that I like it, and it really kind of stirs a lot of things within me. Um, it's kind of like a weird crossroads of industrial and maybe like a little bit of art pop. Uh, lots of kind of Subtly harsh production, lots of weird, whispery, animalistic vocals all over the track. It's it's very odd and uh, very primal. I'll say that. And um, it, I wouldn't say it's catchy. It's just kind of strange and physical and <sighs> just like a like a an angry, evil, sexy tiger growling in your ear like it's going to kill you. Uh, in the dark, and you're strapped to a chair, and you can't do anything. You're helpless. You're helpless against this track. Ah! Like, that's that's pretty much what this song is, is like. That's the vibe. That's the vibe. <laughs> it's, it's pretty fucking crazy. Uh, moving on from there, Ice Age. Uh, this is probably my favorite track of this new promotional lineup that they have going on so far. Uh, this song is titled The Day the Music Dies. It has some nice horns, some nice tambourine and everything. It's got a great groove to it. it feels like a low down and dirty rock and roll tune. Um, I really don't know what else to say about it. I mean, it's super catchy as well. Uh, I, I'm sort of wondering if I'm going to end up enjoying this Ice Age album because this is this is the this is the best track. This is the best track so far. And I feel like I don't know. I kind of just wish each song was like as hype as 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 this one. But hey, you know, Ice Age is 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 rarely a band that sort of works in 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 single tracks. I mean, you have isolated moments here and there, like God's favorite one, where they kind of really nail the whole single thing. Um, but uh, either way, I'm still pretty excited given that uh, I feel like they've been one of the most consistent rock bands of the decade. Um, and uh, you know, hopefully this one they kind of knock it out of the park too. Uh, Fiddler, Alcohol, one of the uh, band's nastiest and drunkenest singles ever. It's wild, it's out of control, and uh, it's super catchy as well. <laughs> Don't they have a song out that's kind of similar to this about cocaine? Uh, I, I feel like it almost runs with the same formula, but it's just like a little bit more over the top. It's just kind of like this really nasty, stole-faced, garage punk tune just about drinking, and uh, it's... It's totally just fucking out of control and uh, and fun and uh, visceral. And a new Deaf Heaven track. Oh, I'm so glad I love this. Deaf Heaven Honeycomb. I feel like the band is reinventing their sound in, in ways that are very much necessary at this point. I feel like they painted themselves into a little bit of a corner trying to continue to force the black metal, black gaze post-hardcore, post-rock thing. I feel like they've sucked a bit of the atmosphere, a bit of the generic post-rock sounds out of their repertoire, and they're focusing more on just muscular fusions of post-hardcore and black metal with just anthemic leads, very interesting kind of progressive uh, song structures, and it hits a lot harder than a lot of the material on their last record. 
Um, it, it doesn't seem like too much of a change of pace, which isn't necessarily a bad thing because I, I think they're going to keep the fans that they nailed with the past couple of records on board with this one. Uh, but this is sounding a lot more interesting to me than what they were doing on their last record. Um, you know, not because again, because they're reinventing the wheel or anything, but they're kind of tweaking their sound a little bit and, and doing something that is a bit more engaging, uh, not so washed out. Uh, so I'm kind of digging that. And uh, Courtney Barnett, uh, digging on this new Courtney Barnett track, City Looks Pretty. Uh, not quite as as lyrically intriguing as the previous couple of tracks that she's dropped uh, from this forthcoming album, but uh, honestly, every single promotional track so far of this new record has just been fire to me. Um, her vocals seem a little bit more animated and engaging. Uh, the instrumentation has more drive and propulsion to it. Um, I typically do like wordy rock music, and, and to me, she's sort of like growing as a narrator, as a storyteller, and um, I, I don't know what else to say. I'm just uh, pretty excited for this record. And, uh, oh, Big Ups has a new record uh, coming out, and uh, this new song, Fear, is easily one of the most angular and tangled songs that they've put out so far. Uh, fusions of post-hardcore and experimental rock on this one. Uh, the vocals, I think, still could be a little bit more distinct, uh, which has always been a little bit of a, of a Achilles heel with big ups, but they're no longer quite on the slint train that they were on their last record, at least on this track anyway. Um, you know, I, I feel like they're, uh, they're, they're toying with the post-hardcore sound in interesting ways, and they're dealing more in the underside, the underground version of the genre, and I'm kind of liking uh, uh, where they're heading with it. And um, I think that is going to be it for the Weekly Track Roundup, guys. That is it. The Weekly Track Roundup. Roundup. Remember, that's the theme song. It's always been the theme song. Uh, remember, all the tracks that I talked about in this video are linked down below in the description box. And uh, again, our Amazon and Turntable Lab associate links down there. And shout outs again to uh, the good people over at SeatGeek. SeatGeek, the SeatGeek app, all of the information, everything you need to see and know down there in the description box once again. And I will see you guys in the next video. Cool? Cool. All right. I love you, love you, love you, love you, love you forever.